Okay, so obviously this is far from the only Premiere keyboard shortcuts video around. I think I've literally watched about 20 of them in the last few days alone. But honestly, it kind of makes sense that there are that many people covering this topic. Speed is such a sought after thing in editing. And while that is partly because people have deadlines and meeting those deadlines is generally a good thing, there's lots of good reasons to streamline as much as possible the process of getting an idea from your head onto the screen. Knowing a crap load of keyboard shortcuts will, of course, give you some good street cred as an editor, but also, as I'm editing more and more these days, I kind of appreciate not having to think so much about what I'm actually doing while I'm editing. I just have an idea, and the process of making that idea real is all just muscle memory. So with all that in mind, what I've done is take the greatest hits of all these keyboard shortcut videos, and I've also gone through the entire list of default keyboard shortcuts cuts in Premiere Pro, so that you don't have to, and gathered all the best ones here in one place. If you're already a very experienced editor, at this point you're probably sitting there going, yeah, right, okay, I know all this stuff already, I don't need this. Well, I'm gonna level with you here. Um, I went a good few years of editing in Premiere without knowing a few of these shortcuts, and a couple of them I didn't know until I started researching this video this week. So it might be worth sticking around as we run down a few useful keyboard shortcuts that come configured as default with Premiere Pro that will speed up your editing workflow that you might not be aware of even if you've already been using the software for a long time. Or, since that's not especially catchy, and definitely doesn't fit within the character limit for a YouTube video title, and for really no other reason than lists are just intellectually satisfying somehow, here are 10 default Premiere shortcuts you can't live without. So, before we get started, one important note. I edit on a Windows machine, so I'll be demonstrating all of these shortcuts on the standard US keyboard layout. If, however, you do your editing on an Apple machine, unless otherwise noted, just substitute Command for Control and Option for Alt, and you're all set. So, let's start with an easy one. A lot of people probably started out making cuts in their timeline using the razor blade tool. Now, while that obviously works just fine, there is a better way. Control K is the default shortcut for add edit. And what it does is, well, add an edit, which is to say a cut, to whichever clip or clips you have selected wherever your playhead is in the timeline. You can also use this shortcut's big brother, Control shift k to add edit all tracks, which does the exact same thing just across every single unlocked track at the playhead's location. Now, you might have noticed that these shortcuts are a bit of an awkward reach no matter how you try to press them. The way I get around this is by mapping both of these commands to a couple of the macro keys on my keyboard. I purposely chose the two that I can most easily reach with my pinky finger, since obviously I use both of these shortcuts pretty frequently. If you don't have macro keys on your keyboard, you can at least remap the add edit shortcut to the C key, since by default that brings up the razor blade tool, which you now, of course, won't be needing anymore. Number two, Q and W. Holy crap were these shortcuts ever a revelation for me when I finally started using them. A barrage of ripple trims using these two keys is the way to rip through an A-roll cut in a hurry. Q and W are the shortcuts for ripple trim previous edit to playhead and ripple trim next edit to playhead respectively. What all that actually means in practice is that instead of having to cut your clip and then ripple delete the part of it that you don't want, these shortcuts let you do that in a single step. Just put the playhead at the end or beginning of the section you want to get rid of, press the corresponding key depending on which direction you want to ripple trim, and you're done, having only had to press one key. These shortcuts are pretty widely known and used, but you don't hear much about their weird modifier key variants. Shift Q and Shift W will let you extend the previous or next edit to the playhead. Now, granted, these are nowhere near as useful as their simple Q and W counterparts, they're actually not a bad alternative to using the rolling edit tool. There's also the much weirder Control alt q and w which will trim the previous or next edit to the playhead, but no ripple, just a trim. 
I can't really see myself ever realistically using these, but maybe you might. You never know. Number three, applying default transitions with Control D, Shift D, and Control Shift D. By default, these will be a cross dissolve for the video transition and the constant power fade for the audio transition. If you want to change your default transition, you can do that by right clicking any transition in the effects panel and clicking set selected as default transition. Honestly though, I think for most people, a plain old dissolve and a plain old crossfade are gonna be the transitions you use by far the most. So I've pretty much always left these as the default, which allows me to apply them with a default keyboard shortcut. Control D will apply the default video transition to the selected edit point or at one or both ends of a selected clip, depending on whether or not those ends are butted up against another clip. If an end is touching another clip, nothing happens. Control Shift D will apply the default audio transition and Shift D will apply both the default video and audio transitions at the same time. And in both cases, the same rules about touching other clips apply. So now you never have to go into the effects panel to get a dissolve or a crossfade ever again. Number four, control. Okay, obviously not control on its own, but I get the feeling that a lot of people don't know that this key is kind of the all powerful modifier in Premiere's timeline. Hold down control and mouse over an edit point and your selection tool will turn into either the ripple edit tool or the rolling edit tool, depending on where you hover your mouse cursor in relation to that edit point. You can also hold down control with an edit point already selected and then use the arrow keys to nudge that edit one frame at a time or five frames at a time if you hold down the shift key in addition to control. This works for any type of edit depending on what tool you had active when you selected that edit point, which you could well have done with control. If you have lots of tracks in your timeline, you can hover over this part of the timeline panel and hold down control to scroll up or down through your video or audio tracks without having to move this divider or resize any of your layers. That one actually comes in pretty handy sometimes. You can mouse over an audio track and hold down control, which will let you place keyframes without needing to actually select the pen tool. And finally, you can select a clip and while holding down control, drag it somewhere else in the timeline to perform a rearrange edit, which will switch the order of the clips without changing any of their durations. You can also add alt to the mix if you want only the current track to be affected by that rearrange edit, which is arguably even more useful, especially in larger, more complex timelines. In any case, hopefully you've just gained an entirely new appreciation for the control key. Number five, A and Shift A, which bring up the Track Select Forward and Track Select Backward tools respectively. Adobe's support page on Premiere Keyboard Shortcuts actually has these listed backwards. Oops. Basically, these shortcuts will save you having to zoom out in your timeline to very carefully draw a selection box around all the clips after a certain point if you need to move them to free up some space. Instead, just hit A, click on the spot in the timeline after which you want to select literally everything. The tracks do have to be unlocked though for this to work. And then you can move it all as far ahead in the timeline as you need. Shift A lets you do the reverse, selecting everything before the spot where you click in the timeline. This one I don't really use as much, if ever, but it's there if ever you do need it. Number six. Alt and a whole bunch of things. While the Alt key kind of languishes in the shadow of its all-powerful neighbor control, it does still let you do a few useful things in Premiere's timeline. First, if you select a clip in the timeline and hold down Alt, you can use the left and right arrow keys to nudge that clip forward or back one frame at a time, or five frames at a time with Shift Alt. If you want to duplicate a clip in your timeline, instead of fussing with the extremely clunky method of using Control C and Control V and having to worry about which tracks are targeted so that you don't paste over other clips by mistake, you can just hold down Alt, select the clip you want to duplicate, drag to wherever you want that duplicate to end up, let go of the mouse button while still holding Alt, and just like that, you've got a duplicate of that clip. 
You can also use the up and down arrow keys while holding down Alt to nudge clips up or down one track in the timeline. I actually use this so much that I just recently assigned a couple of the keys on my secondary macro keypad to Alt up arrow and Alt down arrow so that I could do this with just my left hand. But anyway, that's a little more advanced and definitely for another video. But everything else I just showed you using the Alt key will work in Premiere straight out of the box. Number seven the square brackets and the G key. Now I've lumped both of these together here because they both allow you to adjust audio levels in Premiere's timeline with minimal fuss. The square brackets will adjust the volume one dB at a time for one or more selected clips or for all the clips located under the playhead. Holding down shift while pressing the square brackets will let you raise or lower volumes in increments of six dB. If you have any keyframes in a given audio clip, the square brackets will only affect the area between the keyframes on either side of the playhead, unless you select the clip, in which case the square brackets will now affect the entire clip as one. The one downside here is that you can only increase clip volumes in the timeline by a maximum of 15 dB. If you happen to have a really quiet clip and 15 dB just will not cut it, you're going to have to increase that clip's gain, which you can do by selecting that clip and pressing G. By default, you can just type in the amount you want to increase or decrease the clip's gain, hit enter, and boom, you're done. But you can also set that clip's gain to a specific volume or normalize all the peaks of that clip to a specific dB value. I don't really need to do either of those last two things very often, but if for whatever reason you do, you now know that that option is there. Finally, if you select an audio clip and press Shift G, that brings up the channel routing options for that clip. This can be really useful in the very common scenario of having audio recorded only to the left track and needing to make that source double mono so that the sound is coming out of both speakers. I was so happy when I discovered this shortcut because it meant that I no longer had to bother with the fill right with left effect. It should be noted though that if you have a lot of clips that are like this, it might be better to do this channel routing for the whole track in one shot in the audio track mixer instead of going clip by clip. But again, we're kind of straying from the point of this video a little. As far as quick audio edits go though, the square brackets and the G key are your friends. Number eight, control R. You might already know that the R key brings up the rate stretch tool, which is immensely useful for quickly speeding up or slowing down footage. But if you have to do some more complex retiming, say speed up a clip to exactly two times speed or speed it up while maintaining the audio pitch or play that clip backwards, you have to right click that clip and then find speed slash duration in this big ass context menu. And while that works fine, I'm sure I'm not the only one for whom it honestly takes a second to actually find that option and then click on it to bring up the clip speed and duration settings. Fortunately, there's a better way. Control R just brings up the clip speed and duration dialog box, completely bypassing the context menu. I bet that one is gonna come in handy pretty often. Number nine, Control Shift I, O, and X. I honestly don't know how common this is, but I find myself using in and out points in my timeline fairly often mostly for rendering effects previews for a specific section of my edit, just to make sure it all looks right before I move on. But eventually you have to get rid of those in and out points. And here we run into the exact same problem we had with the speed and duration settings. You have to right click on the top of the timeline and find that option in this gigantic context menu. And it honestly takes a second for your eyes to zero in on that option. Yeah, yeah, I know this has got to be the first worldist of problems, but hey, we're talking about doing repetitive editing tasks as fast as we possibly can. And if I can have those couple of seconds back, I want them, which is where Control Shift X comes in. It removes the in and out points just like that. 
Control shift i and control shift o will remove either just the in or just the out points if for whatever reason you find yourself needing to do that. This is the one case in this list where the Mac default shortcut is completely different from that on Windows. On Mac, these shortcuts are option X to clear the in and out, and option I and option O to clear them individually. In either case though, you can do all of that without that pesky context menu. And last but not least, we have our friend, the tilde key. And I can feel some of you watching now going, oh, so that's what that little key there is called. You might already know that the tilde key will maximize whichever window your mouse is hovering over, but you might not know that shift tilde will do the same thing except for whichever window is selected, regardless of where your mouse cursor actually is on the screen, which is useful, I guess. Or, and I genuinely did not know this until this week, hitting control tilde on Windows and Mac will give you a genuine unobstructed wall-to-wall -wall full screen preview of your current timeline. This can be immensely useful if you're insane like me and like to stand several feet away from your screen to watch your video one last time before rendering it out. Or for normal people, it's actually kind of nice to just be able to watch your video back without any of the program monitor controls in the way to distract you. I feel so stupid for not having learned this particular shortcut forever ago. But anyway, better late than never, and my editing life is better off for it. And hopefully at least a few of you watching this had that very same moment at least once over the course of this video. And I hope that your editing workflow will get speedier and more efficient as a result. If you enjoyed this video, please help me grow this channel and make more videos like this by dropping a like down below, get subscribed, hit the little bell icon so you get notified when new videos come out, and leave me a comment if you found this video useful or if you have ideas for other editing related topics you might like to see me cover on this channel. But that's all for now, thank you very much for watching, I've been Alexander, until next time, goodbye.